Benchmarks for the Zen 3 based Ryzen 5800X just leaked out, and it's way faster than I was expecting. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So benchmarks for this Zen 3 based 5800X, which was previously being called the 4800X, but it's now going to be called 5800X because apparently there's going to be some mobile chips that are going by the name of 5000, so they want them to line up. But in any case, benchmarks for this CPU just arrived online and they were shared with us by the Twitter user Tum Appysack, who is a frequent leaker over on Twitter. You should go ahead and give him a follow and there will be a link in the description so you can go see the original post. But in this post, we can see here that the 5800X was benchmarked on Ashes of the Singularity. Many people call it Ashes of the Benchmark and it was done at crazy 4K with an RTX 2080 and it was compared to an i9-10900K and the same crazy 4K RTX 2080 setup. And here we can see that the 5800X gets 133.6 frames per second, whereas the i9-10900K gets 114.8 frames per second, which makes the 5800X actually 16.4% faster. So you heard it here, folks. If this leak is true, then that means that the 8-core 5800X is actually going to beat the i9-10900K, which is a 10-core processor, and do it by a significant margin. And you know what, if that wasn't impressive enough, I got one more thing I want to show you, which was shared over on Twitter by the user HXL. And here he has another Ashes of the Singularity crazy RTX 2080 performance benchmark here from a 3700X, although this time it was done at 1080p. But in any case, the 3700X scores 103.6 frames per second here. So if we compare that to the 5800X, that makes the 5800X 29% faster. That's right. That's an enormous jump from one generation generation to the next and Intel has not brought generational leaps like that for a long time and honestly I was not expecting AMD to bring a leap that large now we all knew that the Zen 3 based design was going to be really fast for the desktop processors but I was expecting a little bit closer to maybe 15% and 20% at best but it looks like in the best case scenario here that we could be seeing up to 30% gains from one 8 core to another 8 core now we don't know exactly how well that'll scale to the 12 and 16 cores and we also also don't know how well that'll scale to real uh, games that people actually play because people call Ashes of the Singularity Ashes of the Benchmark for a reason. I mean, not too many people play this game. It's not super popular. And it also, you know, it scales really well with processors typically. So we'll just have to wait and see when it gets tested on a variety of games. So don't take this as gospel. But what we do know is that the 5800X is going to be screaming fast. In fact, I don't think Intel stands a chance to beat this thing, even potentially with its 11th gen processor processors because we're talking about a processor that's already you know 16 and a half percent faster roughly and in order to beat that Intel would not only have to get that 18 percent gain that I believe was posted somewhere online I can't re exactly remember who was stating that but I believe their next architecture at least Ice Lake I think it was on the mobile side got an 18 percent uh, jump in IPC but unfortunately that came with a slight clock deficit so if that's the case even if Intel gets an 18 percent IPC jump but they get say a five percent reduction in clock speed, even their 11th gen processors might not be able to actually beat these Ryzen 5000 series processors, which is really, really impressive. And this is the first time in maybe over a decade. I know it's been an extremely long time since AMD's actually had a gaming lead over Intel. See, for a long time, I've been recommending to all my friends to buy Ryzen processors because the value was just so much better. Not only do you have the ability to get PCIe 4 with the third gen Ryzen processors, but on top of that, the platform itself is typically much cheaper you get you know coolers in the box you can tip you can actually go out and if you don't want PCIe 4 you can slap it in a um, Ryzen 3000 series ready B450 motherboard and save money that way and on top of that these processors were just so close to their Intel counterparts that it really made no sense whatsoever to purchase an Intel processor unless you were someone who you absolutely need the fastest gaming processor because maybe you're into esports in the specific game that you play with overclocking you saw like maybe a 15% uh, performance gain or maybe even slightly larger than that and to you that made it worth it but for the vast majority of gamers that made absolutely no sense because if we look at charts from hardware and box we can see here that when we compare the 3900x to the 10900k we can see that their chart shows that it's actually only around 7.5 percent faster on average in seven different games so that's really not a huge margin and to see AMD not only t you know get rid of that lead that Intel had but just absolutely smash it with these processors at least according
according to this one benchmark that we have, that's absolutely incredible. And again, I don't think Intel stands a chance against this, not only with their current gen processors, but even their next generation of processors, which, you know, that sounds really great and all because yes, finally AMD wins. And I've been waiting for this moment for a long time because we can finally say, yes, go out and buy AMD. They are better at pretty much everything. And I can't think of a single thing that they're worse at at this point in time. But there's one bad thing that comes with this, and that's the possibility of a price raise. Because I know a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this, but if Intel's nowhere to be seen because they're still stuck on their 14 nanometer process, they're still trying to get new architectures out, and they're just really lagging behind on that sort of stuff, and they won't be able to surpass AMD for some time, probably not for at least another year. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe Intel has something really uh, awesome waiting in the wings. I know um, some people have been talking to me who are inside of Intel, and they're very excited about stuff that's coming in the future, but that future is a far way off. Well, unfortunately, that means that AMD really has no competition for the foreseeable future, and they have every right for you know to raise prices in their eyes anyway. Now, as consumers, we really don't like that. I don't like to see that, but unfortunately, we may be looking at a scenario where, say, the 5700X, instead of being around $300, which you can buy it right now, it might retail at, like, you know, $350, which I believe would be uh, $20 more than the 3700X launched at, and even more egregious, I'm kind of expecting the 5900X and 5950XT to both go without coolers and raise their prices. Now, I'd really not like to see the 5950X go up in price because the 3950X was already extremely expensive, but I can definitely see the 5900X going up in price, and this sucks to hear, but I really think you're going to get a 5900X between $550 to $600 with no cooler because, let's be honest, who else are you going to go to? AMD's got PCIe 4 ready right now. You don't have to do any BIOS updates or anything for it. You just It just works right out of the box. On top of that, they're going to have a processor that not only has more cores than Intel, because supposedly, you know, not only do they only have 10 cores right now, but apparently the 11th gen processors are going to max out at only 8 cores. Whether or not that's actually true, we'll have to wait and see. So they're going to have better multi-core performance, and now they're going to have better gaming performance, and by potentially a significant margin. I mean, what's their reason to keep prices low to make us happy. I mean, they're out to make margin. They're not out to make us happy, even though it seems like they're out to make us happy because they've been making, you know, very good products. And, you know, to some degree, yes, that is their goal to make their customers happy, but it's not their main goal. Their main goal is to make money for themselves and for their shareholders. So, you know, overall, I'm very, very impressed by this. I cannot wait to get my hands on this. I'm possibly even more excited about these processors now than the graphics cards that they're making. Uh, not 100% sure on that one because I'm very excited for both of them. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to be subscribed because I will be live streaming both of these events. So make sure you're there for that. And also make sure to like this video. Let's see if we can try and get over 3,000 likes. But in any case, yes, I'm very excited for these processors. Can't wait to get my hands on one, but I am a little bit worried about that price. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these leaked benchmarks? And do you think that the price is going to go up? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.